Okay, here we're going to go over specific examples of the material we just covered. So it's going to be a little bit specific and you can go ahead and speed through video if you like or check out more uh, sentences by just using the forward button or you can listen to some of my explanation. In any case, let's go ahead and jump in here. And so we'll go with the wrongs and rights. So here is, here is a wrong. Here. There we go. The dilemma has been experienced. So here the wrong is has been experienced. We should be saying somebody has done something. Not something was done the other way around. The dilemma has been experienced. But here we want to say practic practitioners have experienced. So this is the active passive. The experimenter then asks the child to name the object. The experimenter then asked the child to name the object. So in this case, we're using the present tense that the experimenter is doing something, and here we have the past tense. The experimenter then asks. Well, this is the present perfect tense, so we're actually making it in the past, at that time, but using this asks. In the results section, we may say something like, the social facilitation effect in experiment two replicates our findings in experiment one. But another way to say this would be the social facilitation effect in experiment two replicated our findings in experiment one. So replicated, this period here is wrong, I don't want that period either. The social facilitation effect in experiment two replicated our findings in experiment one. So it's that past tense. Schachter and Singer, 1962, proposed Propose because we're past tense, we're in the literature review section, so that is correct. Cognitive psychologists used the computer metaphor since the 1960s. Cognitive, psycho cognitive psychologists have used, present perfect tense, the computer metaphor since the 1960s. So this is better than this used. Because it sounds like it was before and it didn't happen after. The leader as well as the group members were asked to perform the second task individually. The leader as well as the group members was asked to perform the second task individually. Now this one's a little bit harder, isn't it? The leader as well as the group members. And you were thinking, well, if it's the leader and group members, so this is a group of people, right? Uh, yes, that's correct. And that's the point. It's a group of people, right? It's a group. So as a group, oops, as a group, a group, they are single. So it was, not they were, because they're all together in one group. The criteria for learning was 10 consecutive correct choices. The criterion for learning was 10 consecutive choices. What's the problem here? Inside your formal writing, if the number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you should be spelling it out. If the number is bigger than that, then you should be writing the Arabic number like this. But otherwise, try to spell it out. As with most illusionary phenomenon, this illusion provides an interesting demonstration but generates few experiments. As with most illusionary phenomenon, this illusion provides an interesting demonstration but generates few experiments. What's different? Look right here comma and no comma. And how do we know to put a comma in? Well, we can begin here and we can see that 
this illusion, which would be the subject, and the subject does something, it provides an interesting demonstration, but generates few experiments. So we could even cut this last bit here. This is a little bit of extra, right? The point is, right here, we have a whole sentence, don't we? Right here. This illusion provides an interesting demonstration. So that could be a, sub a, a whole sentence. It has a subject, it has a verb, it has an object. So if that's true and you put something before it, you need to have a comma because this is separated from that. That is dependent or it has nothing to, to do with this. If it has nothing to do with it, then it would be totally independent. And then we'd have to use a conjunction like the word and. However, here we do not use and because it's not really independent, as with most illusionary phenomena. It's more introductory. Let's look at the next example. The data confirms the inhibitory hypothesis. The data confirm. So here it's the plural singular idea, right? Okay. The moving stimuli was the most effective. The moving stimuli were the most effective because of the plural stimuli. The group of experts was to arrive at one solution. This is correct because was, and it's, remember, a group, a single group. The group of experts was tested individually to attain ideal scores at pre to present as targets. The group of experts were tested individually to attain ideal scores to present as targets. So why now is was wrong? This previously we said was is correct because a group should be a group a group would be one. So why is this wrong? Because of the individually right here. This individually means one by one. So they are a group, but we tested them one by one. So one by one, they were tested. It's not a uh anymore, it's a they there. The set of programs was selected. Why was? Because it's the set. And that's just like the group, it's a, a, a set. So it's just the one, and it was, singular. The faculty was paired with the students to form 20 expert novice teams. Again, similar situation, right? Faculty usually would be all the teachers at a school. So we would say something like a faculty or the uh, the faculty. It means all of them. There could be hundreds of them. But in this case, the correct way to write this is the faculty were paired. Why? Because we took them out and we paired them with students. So one by one, they were matched up with students. And that one by one means they're no longer a group. They're individuals. So we need to use they, they were, were paired. None of the flavors were familiar to the rat. And here were, because none, each one, each, one by one, were not familiar. Neither the child nor the parents was able to see the observer. Neither the child nor the parents were able to see the observer. So here it's the was and the were. And again, same idea we just talked about, neither child nor parents, individually, not as a group. After each respondent made a preliminary rating based on the picture, they read the detailed information and made a second rating. After each respondent made a preliminary rating based on the picture, he or she read the detailed information and made a second rating. So how come here, why do we say they is wrong, but he or she is right? Well, 
first of all, we did talk about try to make your pronouns as clear as possible, as specific as possible. For, so he and she is clearly more specific, right? After each respondent made a preliminary rating based on the picture, they. The problem here is if you use they, you, you're kind of thinking each respondent is a group of people and somehow they did something together. But they did not do something together. They all did it by themselves. They each did it. So in this case, each one, we would say he. But remember, we don't want to just say he. So that would be sexist, right? That would be a, 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 excluding a gender. So here we say he or she. And in English, it's perfectly all right to say this he or she. Perfectly acceptable. The clients that achieved a score above the criterion were allowed to participate in the group activity for that day. The clients who achieved a score above the criterion were allowed to participate in the group activity for that day. So this idea of the clients that and the clients who. And because we're talking about these people, so we use the who rather than things that do something. Or actually, things never do anything, do they? Rather than things. The monkeys who showed right paw dominance were trained to select with their left paws. So here we have the same case, same idea. Let me reverse this time. The monkeys that showed right paw dominance were trained to select their left paws. So the exact opposite case. They're monkeys, so they cannot be who, because monkeys are not who, they're not people. It has to be that, because they are not people. A second group of respondents rated on attractiveness the person who the member of the first group selected most frequently as a partner. So this idea of who. The second group of respondents rated on attractiveness the person whom the members of the first group selected most frequently as a partner. A general rule of thumb you can follow is that if you can replace the word with he or she, then you should use who. And if you can replace the word with him or her, then you should use whom. So in this case, the person, he or she, or would it be him or her? And here, because we're very specific, the person, him or her, then we're going to be using the whom. That's a general rule, but again, you can check that out for more detail. A tough one. The Raiders evaluated the therapist using the narrative technique. Using the narrative technique, the Raiders evaluated the therapist. Now, why is this different? Well, here we've got narrative technique here, and here we've got narrative technique here. They were doing something, using something, and using something. So what we've done is, in the wrong sentence, this idea is in the back of the sentence, and in the right sentence, it's in the front of the sentence. That is the idea of making the sentence more active and making it not so passive by putting the action up front and making someone do something rather than the other way around. The overt condition, the children only made a total of 12 incorrect classifications. In the overt condition, the children made a total of 12 incorrect classifications. You can see here the difference is made and only made. Only made is including this word only. Only makes it sound small, but in your research, you should not be specifying things that are small and big unless you have a very specific number. So we don't want to do that. We just want to say, what is the result? What did they actually do? They did 12. Is 12 big or small? That is not for us to tell here. Rather, we can talk about that in the discussion. The parent recorded each utterance the child made. After counting the number of utterances, the child was given the appropriate story to read. The parent recorded each utterance the child made. After counting the number of utterances, the parent 
gave the child the appropriate story to read. We got to look at this one carefully. It's a little bit hard to see where the mistake is. After counting the number of utterances, comma, the child was given the appropriate story to read. And here we say the parent gave. So this one here is passive. The child was given something. And here this one, the correct one is active. The parent gave something. Active is always better. We want to show clearly that the subject has a verb. The subject did something, and they did something to something. But this way, the child was given something, kind of goes backwards. Very hard to understand, and that's called passive. Easy to make a mistake. So try to avoid passive and always try to be active in your writing.